Good morning, friends of TV Agro. I am Andrea Del Pilar Uribe Diaz, I am a veterinarian graduated from the University of La Salle. I am a master and doctor of veterinary surgery with an emphasis on horses and today we are here from the University of La Salle sharing some information regarding a disease that is quite common in the case of horses, which is what we initially know as colic syndrome or acute abdomen syndrome. In everything that concerns this alteration or this problem, it refers to a situation in which, due to various associated factors, they may end up triggering the problem specifically for this species. There are related factors such as environmental, linked to their diet scheme, management, and in conclusion it is the consequence of an evolutionary process that has undergone many changes and has definitely traced the presentation of the disease in a common way and is established as a problem in the management of this species. When we talk about abdominal syndrome, we are referring to a disturbance which we can affirm all horses throughout their lives have suffered at least one episode related to abdominal pain and that has been able to be resolved spontaneously or that in the vast majority of the times it has required the intervention of the veterinarian. That is why all the care that can be taken regarding the management of the species will contribute significantly to generate prevention. And already in the case of the disease, will contribute to the diagnosis and design of a therapeutic plan that will allow determining the condition of the species' animal life. In general, all horses would be exposed to risk, that is to say, it is not linked to race, sex or age. It is mainly dietary factors that end up generating or causing the favorable environment for the disease to break out and when not is treated in a timely manner can mean the death of the animal. In recent years, various training topics for owners and caretakers have been formulated to instruct and encourage more appropriate management to reduce the occurrence of the problem. which, as I said at the beginning, is quite common and has to do with the management of the species. Regarding the presentation of the abdominal syndrome that we colloquially know as colic, Basically the animal has quite telling behavioral signs that allow us to determine that it is the beginning of the abdominal syndrome. Basically we have an animal that rakes its hand on the ground, looks at the lateral side of its body, is restless, has manifestations of abdominal discomfort, which may even want to kick its abdomen, bite itself. Some of its sides or in some in more serious cases, the animal may want to lie down and roll over to relieve the discomfort it feels due to the pressure in the abdominal cavity. When we think about these behavioral manifestations, It is possible to train the people who are caring for the species to make a timely referral to the veterinarian and as i mentioned before avoid fatal consequences when the animal begins to have these symptoms such as raking its hands or wanting to kick itself there is difficulty in breathing that may be related to the distension of the visors within the abdominal cavity or intestinal segments within the stomach. And this causes the animal to animal takes that kind of behavior. 
In some way, one of the first action plans on the farm is to prevent the animal from lying down and rolling. Because doing so will move the abdominal segments and everything that is contained within the stomach and generate more problems such as torsions that it is what worries us the most and that would lead the syndrome to a surgical condition. Thinking about surgical abdominal syndrome is an issue that restricts the animal's life condition. Because it will already have to go through anesthesia and surgery and may decrease the chances that the animal will maintain its life, depending on what is happening. Within the diagnostic methods that can be contemplated, we have determined that the initial evaluation, those principles of conduct that can give us a guide to what is happening, together with a complete physical examination where a follow-up of that gastrointestinal tract is definitely made and where through the reviews the status in real time of each of the intestinal segments is indicated. Additionally, palpation of the rectum the passage of the probe through the nose to the stomach that will allow us to determine if there is content in the abdominal cavity that may be determining the condition or that something may be returning from the anterior part of the intestine to the stomach. And it may be causing discomfort. In the case of rectal palpation, it will allow us to identify what is in the stomach, and if there is something out of place, we can quickly identify it. In addition to these practices, all diagnostic aids come, the use of ultrasonography, which allows from various angles to have an impression of the integrity of the visors, their positioning and their content. To this are added other tests such as the performance of the abdominal parenthesis, where we can obtain a sample of stomach fluid and have a subsequent evaluation that allows us to determine what is in that cavity and have indications of what is causing the animal's discomfort. There is also all the information previously collected, that is, everything that is included in the clinical history, which are the animal's background data, such as what it eats, what is the origin of the water it drinks, what is its zootechnical purpose. In the case of females, for example, if it is a pregnant female, if it is a female that has already had animals, In the case of males we can know if they are whole animals, which may have an aggravating factor in the case of being neutered or not, and additionally have an impression on handling or the type of stress to which the animal may be exposed that also is a major factor related to disease presentation. Everything in horses is related to stress, so management and identification of triggering factors for these conditions will be fundamental in prevention and diagnosis. Therefore, when we know what the zootechnical purpose is, we can know how all the factors are related. Factors and lucky or unfortunate events that lead to the presentation of the disease. These are demarcating the roadmap of the treating veterinarian.
in what is related to the decision on whether the animal's disease is treated with or without surgery, it is based on this analysis of the tests, added to the information collected from the clinical history, and additionally to the laboratory tests that will give more information. Approximate In that sum of all the elements, the treating physician will make a timely decision to refer the patient to a hospital where the animal can be closely monitored and the decision is made whether to go to surgery or not. Normally the animals that go to the operating center depend on the type of condition that is related to the abdominal syndrome. Not all causes of acute abdomen are surgical. Several of them are resolved from medical management without major interventions only with treatment focused on establish the movement of the visors. control pain and control complications to other parts of the body, especially in horses, when discomfort is reflected in the hooves. Being able to reach a timely diagnosis and in order to restore the animal's health are great challenges for the treating veterinarian. Either in the field or in any hospital. That was what I had to tell you today. The University of La Salle is with its doors open so that when you have doubts or concerns or are interested in taking undergraduate, postgraduate or specialization courses on all this subject, we are an open door institution that will always be interested in contributing to the management of the species, thank you very much.